Hey everyone, Kelly Link here, host of Liquid Mastery, and I'm joined by Heather, a lead video editor for Team Liquid. Thank you for joining me here. Yeah, thanks for having me. How exactly did you get into esports? Well, um, I really kind of dove into esports as a big fan, wearing the jerseys, going to the events with the Overwatch League. I really loved playing Overwatch, and when they announced the league, I was super excited because they had a Los Angeles team. I'm like, oh, this is something I can root for and look forward to every week. So I really, really got into watching that. And after a while, I kind of realized like, you know, I want to work in this field. Like I was just a video editor at a fashion company, but I was like, I kind of want to take my video editing to esports with the Overwatch League. So I started applying for jobs and actually the only one I was able to find that was kind of semi-related was a social media coordinator. So I took that one, it was for my favorite team, the Los Angeles Valiant, and I worked there for a couple of years and I really enjoyed it. I love social media. I learned a lot on that job. I really got to ingrain myself in esports, which was really exciting. But after a while, I kind of, I missed video editing. Like I set out in the world to do post-production. And so um, when it came time for me to kind of go back into that, um, I saw an opportunity at Team Liquid. And so I took that. Talk to me a little bit about what you do for Team Liquid as a video editor. Uh, well, I'm a senior video editor at Team Liquid, so any project that falls on my lap, um, it, it can range. <laughs> there are lots of different esports, lots of different partners, um, so I'll do something from an apparel cut to an episode of Squad to following any of our other teams, um, so every day is different. Tell me a little bit about your favorite videos that you've done. Is there one that like sticks out in your mind? Um, I'd say that I really enjoyed doing the Black Widow jersey video. That one was such a fun shoot. We got to do really cool stuff on set, so getting that footage, they were kind of just like, pick a song and be creative. So I really enjoyed doing that one. Um, I also love this episode of Squad that I did um, where I really got to ideate it before the episode was even shot. It was kind of comparing Core JJ playing on a PC keyboard to someone playing on a piano keyboard and how he's kind of in his own brain. And it's just a work of art the way Core JJ plays his game. And so we kind of compared it to that and our cinematographers did something really cool where he's in a spotlight. Like it looked like he was on stage playing the piano. So how exactly did you and Team Liquid connect? At my time at Valiant, I was kind of working on some video editing things on the side and I would post that on my own Twitter and kind of make it known on my own personal channel that I, I am a video editor. I know how to use these Adobe programs and do this motion graphic stuff. And the more I posted that, I started to notice that video editors in the space were following me and we were kind of like interacting with each other's stuff. So my, my timeline kind of became half esports, half the filmmaking side and the few that are esports in filmmaking. Perfect timing when it came to the point in my career where I wanted to go back to post-production, I actually got a DM from the director of one of studios um, um, asking if he can like speak with me about potentially going there. Um, and it's because he saw the work that I was posting. So you weren't making an active effort to get hired by Team Liquid, but by just posting your work, you were getting noticed. Yes, exactly. It was actually very natural. And um, by the time that I got that DM, I wasn't looking, but I was ready <laughs> to go into post-production. So it was kind of just, yeah, long-term upkeeping my social media to make it known that I'm a video editor who loves esports. All right, so we busted out the Alienware PC, we're ready to go, but you know, I need you to kind of explain to me what exactly are we looking at? Well, this is Adobe Premiere. Um, this is what I primarily used to edit. There are other programs, but I, I really enjoy the Adobe series. They really link together really well. So most of my video editing experience is with Windows Movie Maker, back when I did anime music videos, but that was like, 20 something years ago. I have worked a little bit with Adobe Premiere, but not to the extent that you have. Well, that is an excellent start. We've all started with AMVs at some point, um, but this has a lot more bells and whistles on it. Um, super useful. We got a ton of footage of you sitting on a desk, doing really fun stuff. We have them all organized here from the shots of the mug, the coffee mug, the super tight shots of like all of the B-roll features, which is basically like filler footage to help establish what's going on, what's happening. And then we have this beautiful wide shot of you um, doing all of these spins and poses at the desk. And what we're gonna work with here is using this footage to kind of make like a, a fake Alienware Mastery series um, intro. Oh, I love that you paused it right here because that is pretty much how I felt all throughout the intro. So are we gonna be making the intro right now or are we just looking at what Adobe Premiere is? Well, there's a lot of footage that I was given for this project and the first thing I did was look through it. Adobe Premiere is kind of divided into these four little windows where you kind of go through the steps of putting footage onto the timeline. Starting first is the timeline. This is where your final cut's gonna go. Any footage that you want to be in your final product, you kind of drag it into 
into the timeline. Um, and you are dragging that from your project window here, which holds all of your footage. You can view it in different forms, but I personally like the list view because you guys did shoot a lot for this intro. So I can click and watch any of these in our source window here. It kind of shows you everything from as soon as the camera's recording to as soon as the camera cuts. And you can kind of pick what you want, drag it onto the timeline. This is the whole uncut clip for this particular example. And you can kind of trim the shape on the timeline to kind of get the in and out points that you want to appear. Otherwise, you can use the razor tool, which will just chop it anywhere that you click. Or if you're like me, you can just chop it right on the playhead. Whatever's useful for you. The thing about editing is everyone has their own style. Everyone has their own ways. Some people prefer all the hotkeys. Some people prefer using their mouse more. What's kind of great about editing is it has a lot of variations and customizations that you can do to edit. Do you have to go through and watch everything? It depends. Some projects, you don't really have the time and luxury to go through all the clips that you have, but it is important to kind of familiarize yourself with everything that was shot. Working with the cinematographers and producers is really helpful too to kind of save you that time. Having someone run through like, we got all this B-roll shot, we got one long shot of you at the desk, and we have all these other little shots. Like that helps me kind of figure out what, what's in front of me and what I have to work with. Well, here you're working on essentially like a 15 second intro. How long does it take for you to gather all these clips, put them all together, go through it, and then edit the final project? It's actually kind of itemized in very basic ways. There's a wide and a ton of tights. And luckily for this, there's no syncing audio. You don't talk ever. It's really just fun clips to fun music. So th there's a lot of freedom there and it actually expedites the process quite a bit because I can just kind of puzzle piece this however I want to in whatever way feels best. Um, but for a series like this one we're recording right now, we have three, four cameras on us. We have lots of microphones. All of those things are gonna need to be synced um, for whoever edits this episode before you can even start going into the cutting. So for this intro, we not only got a wide shot of you doing all of these fun poses, but we also got a lot of inserts of kind of like your desk, like a lot of the laptop, a lot of the coffee cups and plants. So you have a lot to choose from here. Uh, and what we're going to do first is make a selects timeline. And what a selects is, um, is pulling kind of the best moments of every clip. Like I think you might've filled a coffee cup with a liquid like, at least five times, but there's gonna be one of those that's better than the others. And this is kind of our chance to go through it and figure out which one that is. And so I just click and I'm, I'm gonna watch every single one. What you can do um, to save time is kind of fast forward. You can press L and it'll actually kind of speed things through. Um, so you can get a, a pretty good gauge of how long the clip is, when the kind of action ends. It looks like for this one, it kind of pans across across the plant and ends on like the Team Liquid logo. Okay, so this is kind of something that I'm interested in is that you kind of want to tell a story a little bit, even though it's just a 15 second intro, it's me setting up the laptop, right? So you want that to be a little like chronological or is that not important? Well, it depends on it depends on what you're making, but I, I think that was the mindset when shooting all of this. We have footage of you at your desk and then pouring, you know, a cup of coffee and plugging in your computer. So if you wanted to follow that kind of timeline, that's definitely an option. How do I cut from right here? There's a couple ways you can do it. The way I prefer is I like to do it all in this source window. I kind of keep my timeline clean. So what you can do where you are right now is press I, and that means that's the in point. That's where you want the clip to start. And when you get to where you want to end, you press O for out. Bam. And so you see those little brackets there. Now when you drag it in, which you can either just drag the whole face of the of the clip or yeah, or you can drag it from there as well. It'll only bring in that little section. So now when you make your timeline, it's just going to be full of these just best moments all in a row. And there's a lot of things to consider when pulling selects, like how the camera's moving, if it's shaky, sometimes the thing you want to focus on is out of focus. Like those are all kind of things that you want to keep an eye out for when choosing the best shots. But right now, the best gem shots are in a pool of just constant camera rolling and doing whatever. So I think pulling what's best and then pulling, like cutting down from that is like a good beginning for any edit. This is a nice laptop shot. Nice action in this one. It's like an opening. There's actually something happening in the shot. Ooh, All right, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, let's take that one. So what do you, how do you figure out which one's the best one? Is it just whichever's the most stable? Is it one that makes sense for the quote unquote story you're trying to tell? So it really depends. Um, this is, I feel like a lot of new editors get kind of nervous when picking the best take. They want to ask everyone else, like, what do you think? What do you think? And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think having confidence of like, I really like the shot. I can make this work. Going for it. Throwing it in your selects and putting it in the cut. Like, that's cute. I think that's cute. Me too. Ooh, the <laughs> I love this one. I love this one. Oh, no. If this were my cut, that would be in the final. <laughs> uh, oh, 
no. Oh, I love the cup ones. Bang. Oh, I like the smile at the end too. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, so now we have a timeline our best moments. Uh, if you have the time, what I really like to do is kind of make it very visually easy to see what's what. So at the end, I think you pulled like maybe four of your wide shots. So what I would do is I would highlight those four um, and what you can do is right click them mm -hmm. and go to label, uh, which should be in the middle there. There we go. Yes, <laughs> and then pick, I like mango. And when clips are on the timeline, graphics are on the timeline, it gets kind of messy. If everything's blue, it makes it kind of hard to see. So I like to do that. If you wanted to go a next step further, you can color all the mugs one color, color, you know, whichever. Um, but that's kind of the stage to do it now because what we're gonna do after this is take all of these selects and kind of form them into the actual edit to music, to timing, all of that fun stuff. Something like this is very music driven. I mean, it's an intro, so there's no other sounds. It's just music underneath. So picking the right song is gonna be the first step in determining the tone for this. Do you pick the tone first for the video or do you kind of conceptualize the video and then the song comes last? Well, if it's something like this that is really driven by music, picking music is a process. Like these I pulled and downloaded for our purposes, but I will spend hours sometimes on a music library really finding something that fits what I want. It can be a challenge. Sometimes you hit a gold mine and you're like, this song is perfect. Sometimes like you hear the song first and you're like, you know, I really like the song. I would love to use it for this piece. Sometimes music is the very first thing even before you shoot. So you're able to just listen to these songs for a few seconds and kind of envision a whole video around that. Is that something that's just natural or did you have to teach yourself that? Well, I think you'd be surprised like with how much content we all consume. We all picture our own things when we hear music. Like you've heard your own versions of like what you pictured in your mind when you listen to a song. And I think that's kind of what makes the music so special. If you can have an edit, that is driven by music. Sometimes I like to just listen to music in our libraries and picture how it can be used for like a video. Like for Squad, for our League of Legends team, I'll listen to music and be like, oh, if there's ever a time where we lost a really important game, I really want to use this song because I can see it now in my head. And I'll save it and I'll put it in a folder that says bittersweet music or things like that. Um, but I think we all kind of, we all have that form somehow inside ourselves of like, oh, I can see this put to this music. And that's what you really want to draw when you're editing. Um, but there are some times where music isn't even a factor until the very end. Like right now we're recording an interview type series. Our music that we're hearing right now is not really accompanying us in that. It's driven by the music. This is kind of music that's underneath while we speak. So in my personal experience, sound design was literally just picking a Linkin Park song to go to the Dragon Ball Z AMV that I created, but there must be different elements that go into sound design. Yes, uh, there's a lot of different things. Like there's music, that's the most obvious one. A lot of sound design too is getting like sound effects Let's say you, you put down a mug in one of the shots and we actually don't have audio of that. But if we wanted it, we would have to either go to a library that has those kind of sounds. There's libraries out there that have every sound you can imagine. Or if we needed it to be really custom, we can go into a studio, record the, the sound of you putting down the mug and matching it. So a lot of creating those scenes through sounds um, goes into sound design, as well as like ambient sound. If we wanted to shoot something outside, but the birds weren't chirping that day and the wind wasn't blowing that day, we can add that stuff to kind of really give the feel of being outside. I think a lot of good sound design really aids the feeling you want to accomplish. If you want to be scared, sound design is really important in making you feel scared. If you want to be happy, like adding those bird sounds make a big effect. So sound design, it has, it's, it's its own job. <laughs> I feel like audio balancing though, anytime I watch TV or movies by these multi-million dollar companies, they always find a way to not do audio balancing very well. So why is that so challenging? Well, if you've ever noticed when you, commercials come on, they're 10 times louder, right? It's because they want to get your attention. Um, one important thing is to kind of keep your audio levels at a really good listening level. The sweet spot that you want to hit is between negative six and negative 12 decibels for the dominant sounds if you want. And if you want something to be in the background, you'd want it to be a little below that. All right, Heather, we've gotten our clips, we got our audio, you put it all together, and now you made an intro? Yeah, I found a song that I feel like best fits the vibe, and I like put it together in my own little sequence, and we, we can watch it. I totally see what you mean by 
my graphic design when I was editing it, I didn't even consider like putting it into a frame like this, right? And it just adds a little bit more of a personality and the tone to it. Yeah, and you know, to be completely candid, it took a while for me to get to this point. At first I tried to just have the footage and kind of incorporate the graphics. Cause one thing that was already established for this series that we as Team Liquid determined and Alienware determined is it's kind of like handwritten scribble. That's kind of what all the graphics are on all our oh. other promotional material. So I wanted to pull that into the video series and I, I had struggled trying to get that into the footage and eventually I came to this conclusion of why don't I shrink the footage down once in a while into this framing and I feel like that's what really made it more dynamic. But also like you're talking about the personality of the scribble but also good in gaming you have the Team Liquid's like logo and the Alienware logo within the O's there so you're adding different levels of branding just in little like designs little almost Easter eggs. Yeah and it's such a short amount of time I think it's only like what 15 seconds so there's a lot to show and establish there and as long as I get Alienware, Team Liquid, the good in gaming, and like what the series is, it, I accomplished what I came out to do. Yeah, I love it, this is perfect. Heather, thank you so much for joining me here today for Liquid Mastery. I feel like I've learned so much and I know there's people out there that wanna learn more about being a video editor. So if you just had some general tips to give them, what would they be? Uh, well, I'd say first and foremost, with any craft, just do it. <laughs> Get as much experience as you can video editing because with every project, there is something new. It's, it's, I love the critical thinking in this craft because every project comes with its own set of challenges, its own styles and tones, and the more you do, the more experience you get. And you can always draw that in to the next time you approach that issue or a tone that's similar to that. So the more experience you have under your belt, the more comfortable you'll be in, in the editing space. Um, so take projects when they come, make your own projects if you have to, but just keep doing it. Secondly, I would say like have a reel, like be sure to keep track of all of those projects that you're working on, the ones you're most proud of, and put them together in a reel so you can show someone like, look at what I've done, look at all these cool things I did, look at what I'm able to do, check out my range. Like you wanna be able to accomplish all that through your reel. So keeping that up to date, having that ready to go in pocket in case you ever get that DM, it's really important. And that leads me to my last point, which is to be active on social media, be in the space. If you wanna be in esports, follow the esports scene and um, post your work so that people can kind of recognize that you are a video editor and someday if they need one, they'll think like, oh, there's someone on Twitter, I like their work, maybe I'll reach out to them. Thank you once again, Heather, for joining me here and teaching me so much about video editing. And we're gonna be learning a lot more about the behind the scenes roles here at Team Liquid. So if that's something you guys are interested in, then stay tuned.